Welcome aboard the news review segment. This is where we slice and dice the, those germane stories, the most major ones in the newspapers. This morning, shortly, I'll be joined by former president of the GJA, the Ghana Journalists Association, Afail Money. But this segment always brought to you courtesy of Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. If you're a man and you've never checked out how your prostate is functioning, you could be in trouble someday. If you're a woman and you're not checking out what your fertility is like, you could be caught pants down, literally, someday. So, you don't want to take a chance on any of that. That's why you ought to make your way to Endpoint Homeopathic uh, Clinic. That's what they are offering you. And it's totally free if you're going for any such screening. Here's where you can locate them. Here in Accra, at Spintex, opposite the Shell signboard, there's Kumasi Krunum Abwehia behind the Angel Educational Complex. There's Temma Community 22. There's Techiman Hanswa and there's Isiyama Enzima, as well as Takradianaji State, if I did not mention that earlier. And the numbers to reach them on, 0244-867-068. There's also 0274-234-321. And Point Homeopathic Clinic, the end to chronic disease. But just the start of the news review. Now, this morning, before we get into the newspapers, I'd like to hear from you in the context of yesterday's event um, and some of what emerged. There was a lot of rhetoric. There was a lot of talk from the Ghana Bar Conference in Cape Coast in the central region, fitting and as a student of the law, I'm always fascinated by some of these things. Of course, uh, the development of the law in this country. I feel there are so many things that could have developed more, better, that have not. But something is better than nothing. Uh, my thoughts, though, on Mr. President. In, in recent times, he's been in Rwanda saying a few things. I'll, I'll delve into that at the end of the week. But yesterday, when he spoke about corruption, he spoke about a number of things, uh, labeling the judiciary and, uh, among, you know, myriad issues, but specifically on corruption and allowing the, the, the long arm of the law to do its work. In other words, constitutionalism, the rule of law to, to prevail. I found it interesting when he spoke specifically about graft, corruption. Proye, niketashashe. Uh -huh. bribery and corruption. And he made mention of the fact that citing issues from Wache Jako to Alad Chermating all the way down to even Cecilia Dapa. And that all of these people, of course, cleared and they had gone through the processes. But even in a legitimate system, you can create processes such that it just becomes a fan belt for clearing. Some people have tagged the president with a certain name. I don't think it's fitting to call our president names, whether then or now or in the future. However, I feel we ought to be honest and above the board. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, Mr. President, you, you said that you know, you had allowed processes to be gone through and everything and that you had never interfered and stuff like that. I'm, I'm just paraphrasing, Mr. President, from what I recall. But even the latest, and I can give you a plethora of examples, the latest incident with Cecilia Abnadapa, former minister, sanitation and water resources. She resigns. And then you put at the end, you know, I am confident in your integrity and all of that. I mean... Uh, what kind of system do we have? If you're not interfering, don't interfere. Drink deep or touch not. So it's either you're doing it or you're not doing it, Mr. President. But from where I sit and what I've seen, it's not the best of situations when it comes to graft. So if you're watching, Mr. President, or if there are any of you who are in the circles of power watching, tell Mr. President... But some of us are not convinced. But the good thing is, your time is not over yet. It's like, it reminds me of that Wyclef Jean, you know, the record is not over yet. So, still time to work, Mr. President. If you are going to fight against corruption, the time to start was yesterday. Let's get into the papers now. And uh, as and when we are joined by Mr. Moni, 
uh, we can uh, proceed. So I have here with me this morning, let me just do a quick rejig, reshuffle of the newspapers. I'll do the Economy Times last. But the Daily Graphic, the Daily Guide, the Finder newspaper, all finding themselves here on my table. And uh, speaking of which, there have been some circumstances with the Ghanaian Times newspaper and getting it in recent times. Um, what's, what's happening? Times Corporation. And I am Yana Minutisi. Anyway, so the, the Daily Graphic is the first paper I'll get to. And it says, EC begins limited voter registration today, despite court injunction. And um, <clears throat> on this very thorny matter, hmm, Bibri, but I'll be bringing you details of that. And it's one of the stories that I'll be looking at uh, on the show today. There's also GTEC freezes and accredited uh, academic programs. That story there as well. There's also public office accountability onslaught on ill-gotten wealth. New bill to tackle corruption. Mr. President, how long has this been on your plate? How long has this been on your table? It's something that we've pushed for. It's something that Occupy Ghana has spoken about ad nauseum. And in recent times, on the back of what happened with Cecilia Dapa, it was brought up again. Recently, I was actually looking at, well, what's the name of that file? I think, um, I think I still have it here somewhere. Uh, conduct, it, it should be here. I, just, I saw it even this morning. Or has my system you know, pushed it somewhere else? Uh, I downloaded a file, I think the public offices and some of what they have to do <clears throat> per the commission. These are, these are things that the constitution has its own stipulations. And now we see people enriching themselves in many ways, in many shades. You cannot run away from it. Uh, but I'll get into the details of that story. There's also political coloration of judiciary dangerous. That's according to Mr. President. But, but you know, on this one, eh, I have a quick thought. And I know some people may take me on and feel aggrieved by the fact that I am making mention of this. But are we saying that these political parties, not political parties, these justices of the court, these members of the bench, do not have any political coloration? Uh, it, it would also be an antithesis of sorts to say that. Because, like the Greek philosophers will tell us, we are political animals. You learn this in, in political science, 101. We are political animals. There's, there's politics even in the bedroom, you know? And the only point, though, is that we shouldn't allow politics to take over our reasoning, and especially as judges, we shouldn't allow it to compromise our thinking. That, that, that is the only bit. But this whole bit about, you know, judges, of course, I don't agree with any concept of MDC judges or MPP judges. But let's also not pretend. Let's, let's not pretend as though it were totally, you know, non-existent in our system. They will have their political colorations, but the point is that that coloration or those colorations should not impact the work they do. Finito. And I found it again a sort of um, contrarian attitude when Mr. President cited the United States yesterday at the Ghana Bar Conference, pointing to the fact that there, your colorations are clearly known, and they have a system, voting and all of that, if you want to be a member of the bench, especially we're talking about the Supreme Court, among others. So why, I, I feel we're being hypocritical. It is what it is, but the fact is, even here where I sit, on my own bench, you can be CPP, NDP, MPP, NDC, whatever. When you come here, do your work responsibly. Do your work in the national interest. I feel it should be the same with the judges. So, I don't know. I, I think we're just being, you know, we're, we're, we're pretending <laughs> versus the obvious. Anyway, uh, just some quick thoughts there. Let me get to the back page of the Daily Graphic now. Quarry and Shama operating illegally, Minerals Commission. And 
you know, I always find it interesting. So they were operating illegally. It took this explosion. It took this explosion for us to realize they were operating illegally. I'm intentionally silent for a while, just for us to reflect. In this country, things will always happen. And when they do happen, then you find out, oh, this person was even not registered. Oh, this person is a quack doctor. The person is not even qualified. Oh, like in this instance, they are not even legit. Who allowed them to be there operating? Ghana, how are let me say a very good morning to Afil Money. Thank you for coming, sir. Good morning. I think it's only fitting. Yes. <laughs> I hope you're well. By his grace. Colorful tie. Thank you. Uh, I've just been, I've, I've not even started getting into the thick of things. I, I started talking about Mr. President at the Ghana Bar Conference yesterday sure. and what he says about corruption and his administration's bid to tackle it. I don't know what you, if you listened and what you thought. I did. And uh, this bit about political colorization or coloration, if you like, of the judiciary is just what I was also delving into. Um, what is your take? What, what do you make of these? I mean, it, having listened to him, corruption, judges with political coloration. But research has shown the linkage between the political affiliation of certain judges mm. and the decisional outcomes of certain cases at the court. True. Yeah. So um, we, we, as I said, we do not play the ostrich. Certain judges do not care a hoot about showcasing their political affiliation. Mm. But all this does not justify the earth shattering attacks. Right. By, I agree. I agree with you totally. By, by the president against, 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 against uh, uh, the bench. Yeah. You mean uh, the former president? The former president. Right. The former president. But there's a cardinal principle in communication. We say that the truth of a matter is not enough justification for saying it. Right. Yeah. So it, it might be true, but what, what, what would be the effect, what would be the consequences of rocking the boat. Right. So, um, and, and just you imagine, I mean, even as you go on, let's assume, let's assume the former president returns to power. You still have the chief justice there. You cannot remove her. There are only certain, of course, even a chief justice, even a president can be removed based on certain things. For example, infirmity of mind, among other things, or gross misconduct such that it is over and beyond anything you expected. The Constitution has processes for removing such a person. But let's assume the former president does come to power, and now you have this person as the third arm of government. Friction yes. or not? It, it's obvious. Yes, obvious, obvious. So um, we know the pronouncement of a former president uh, carry weight, mm. and um, the caution that the need for, for him and the political class in general to inject the highest dose of circumspection mm. in, in whatever they say. They, mm. should, they should temperate, they should be very temperate in their language because um, what is said and, and the response, the response of the president mm. have notched up tensions in this country. You know, our politics is full of tensions. And when it gets to elections, you know, we, we can't, elections are characterized by high voted tensions mm. and red hot mm. anger. So our, from, and all the processes leading to elections, you know, we should be very, very temperate, very, very cautious. Right. In order not to uh, uh, flame, flame the fans, the fan, the fan, fans fan the of, flames of. Yeah. And, and, and whenever, you know, we have these conversations, I always think of Kenya. When Kenya went under, when Kenya had its crisis, somewhere in the 2000s, early 2000s. Uh, who would have thought? <clears throat> who would have thought that would have happened in Kenya? Kenya, Kenya. was a beacon of democracy in sure. Eastern Africa, every, just as we are being hailed. Sure. I always tell people that don't take it for granted when you are hailed and, oh, look at what is happening in Senegal. Beacon of democracy. Look at what, uh, how, that slope it is going down. And it, it was bad for me. It was wrong. I mean, these are tax on the judiciary. Like you said, something maybe, it's like the, the, the Bible says, um, 
all things are good to be done. Yeah. In fact, you can choose to do it. All things but are lawful. But all things all are lawful. All things are permissible. Yes. Not all things are beneficial. All yeah. things are uh, uh, permissible, but not all things are beneficial. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you can, but you may not. Sure. And sometimes you must apply, like you said, certain circumspection. Yeah. In the process. So I agree I with you on that. Process. While we know that there are challenges in the, the third arm of government, I feel how we address those challenges could either make or break us. Yeah. In the name but, of freedom of speech, exactly. you, can, you can say anything. But the malignant impact of mm. what you say mm. is what we are all reaping as a nation. And on it's the back of that, anything else. We, 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 we had responses from the president. He, he spoke about it, Nanado Dankwe Kofuado. The Chief Justice went down that road as well. The President of the Ghana Bar Association also went down that road. And Attorney General? Yes. All four of them. But I was wondering, though, in terms of fanning the flames, one wrong, another wrong, because in condemning it, they also said certain things. You know, it fuels the fire. Sure. Okay, so you've said this, and I've also said this and jabbed you, and you would want to come back with come a back. response. Yeah. How did you find their reactions as well? Quickly, before we continue with other stories. Uh, it is said that actions and reactions are equal and opposite. Mm. Um, so the Elsha train comment by the president also attracted. Mm. Um, um, one would say the... Um, the expected response from the president, but the forum, and I'm happy that the Ghana Bar Association has come out to dissociate itself from the comments the president made on that platform. And um, um, so this should serve as a lesson, this should serve as a fountain of lesson from which we should drink as we inch towards election 2024. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, um, you know, your verbal pronouncement, verbal violence can crystallize into physical violence. Mm -hmm. And this is how you start. So, we, uh, as we should all be circumspect, especially the media, the way we report such incidents, such pronouncements. This is a time to strengthen our gatekeeping roles as journalists. Um, there are certain pronouncements because they, they make for very interesting sound bites, and, and, and it, can, it can also couch very interesting, very catchy uh, headlines from them. But the consequences is what we should look at as, as, as media community. Mm. Let's get into some other stories very quickly, and then uh, I'll let you come in with the Daily Guide, as well as the other papers you have. Uh, so starting with that story, public office accountability onslaught on ill-gotten wealth, new bill to tackle corruption. President Akufuado has stated that the Attorney General is leading an assignment to develop the Conduct of Public Officers Act to address extensively issues of financial portfolios of public officers before assuming office and links to family businesses, among others. The intended bill is also to address imp improper enrichment by public office holders, care of public property, professional practice uh, property, investment, shareholdings, and other assets. Now, he said the Ghanaian people were expecting that Parliament would rise as an effective machinery for accountability, ensuring and fully assuming its oversight responsibility over the executive, while the judiciary would inspire confidence in the citizenry and the courts seen as arbiters when disputes arose. And that's where some of us are concerned, whether they will actually be seen, whether the people will have confidence in them. Some of these actions, pushbacks, are what do not create confidence in uh, the judiciary. But this, this bit about this new act uh, to combat corruption. Our constitution is clear. Sure. It talks about public office holders of a certain category, including Mr. President, ministers, and all of that, what you must do before you assume office. Um, I think after every term, after every term, I, don't, the, I think there's a two-year clause in there, but after every term and when you finally conclude whatever, at the start, at the end of every term. And there are strict regulations about lying. In fact, I remember the Constitution talks about the only justifiable reasons. Maybe you inherit property, gift, loan, stuff like that. And anything else outside of that that is questionable must be gotten into. But do we ever see that? Well, do we really? Not at all. Not at all. And the present regime... Uh, Based for one, um, 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 declaring 
his or her asset, mm. this will be kept somewhere mm. without subjecting what was declared to, to scrutiny. Mm. So, so you can get away, get away with the matter. So uh, the time has come to take a hard look at the uh, asset declar declaration regime so that we can hold public officers, occupies, uh, those who occupy public office, to the test of accountability. And it's, it's interesting that the president is putting more fire into this bill. This bill has been incubating for some time now. Yeah. And, and as we said, rightly said, occupying Occupy Ghana has been very silent mm. in calling for its passage. So the time has come to do the new for by passing this bill into law. But we also need to emphasize that the litany of anti-corruption laws do not necessarily, examples have shown, experience have shown, that do not necessarily crystallize into uh, uh, or reduce acts of corruption. Um, in many instances, political will have been so conspicuous by its absence in dealing with acts of corruption. Mm. If government in power will master the political will to deal with its own, to deal with their own people, I believe it will go a long way in fighting and in achieving something substantial mm. in the fight against corruption. Mm. Well, uh, just to wrap with the Daily Graphic quickly so you can come in with your papers, there's IGP phases accusers in camera uh, today. So we're not going to be, you know, uh, we're not going to have our cameras trained on, on, <laughs> on him or on the committee. But it will be, um, it will be important for the... Um, Parliamentary, uh, um, uh, are you in support though, of the in-camera bit? Or you, there are some who say that it would have been good. Of, of course, already there are uh, exposés, if you like, on what goes on in there. You've listened to COP, Alex Mensa, among others. So why shouldn't we hear from the IGP on the same? What, what do you think? Um, my, my, my opinion is that uh, um, national security considerations should outweigh whatever, you know, uh, obviously, exactly. because um, we all know if we don't get it right, uh, security-wise, um, this, this can uh, 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 ripple, have a ripple, ripple effect in so many, uh, uh, not, just, not just Sababa as a nation, mm. not, just, not just Sababa as a whole. So um, we all had the uh, caustic accusations, the deluge of uh, complaints against the leadership style of the IGP, and uh, he was described in the most uh, uh, unpalat unpalatable terms. Mm. And, 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 and the law of fairness dictates that we should hear from his side. But the accusations are so, so serious mm. that IGP might end up also opening certain kinds of worms which yeah. ought not to be opened in the first place. So um, I'm, I have no qualms with the decision by the committee to hear the IGP in camera. But one would suggest that a, a press is the capsule of what the IGP would say, minus the um, 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 certain pronouncement or certain uh, um, um, uh, answers you will give, which might impact negatively on national security. We should, we, the committee should feed the general public with a capsule of whatever the IGP will say. So it should be sort of, filtered, basically. It should be filtered, yeah. It should, right. see, it should be filtered. Right. And then that should be a press statement which will capture the essence of what the IGP said to set up, to strike a semblance of balance right. between what, what the, his accuser, accuser said mm. and he also his response to what he said. Right. Uh, EC begins limited voter registration today despite court injunction. The EC is set to begin the limited voter registration exercise at its district offices. That is one bone of contention across the country today in spite of a pending interlocutory injunction filed at the Supreme Court by the NDC and four other minority parties. The 21-day exercise is scheduled to end on October the 2nd. It will start from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. each day. Quick thoughts? Um... The DC is asserting its independence. The Boka parties also think, and, and the civil society and the uh, um, um, evangelists of democracy also think that uh, it should be made easier for uh, potential voters to register, to enable them to exercise their fundamental right to, to vote. 
Um, the case is in courts. Um, it's unfortunate that the, 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 our court system um, did not see the need to fast track a, a, a decision on this, on this issue. But going forward, we need at all times mm. to place emphasis on consensus building. The consensual framework should be consensual framework should be created by both, especially the EC, so that they can get the political parties on board. Elections do, are do, impossible. Do, do, do you feel that is not being created? Do you feel Process there's an, NDC, unnecessary like antagonism? Recently, Dr. Kwejo Afarijan was yes, advising the, line, the, the, the NDC, NDC to go back to, 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 to IPAD. But, but do you feel there's unnecessary antagonization by the EC, which may hobble such a process? Their posture in certain instances do not make for consensus building. Their posture does not make for consensus yes, building. Yes, their posture in certain instances. At the same time, the NDC should also understand that you know, the EC operates within the confines of the law. But the laws, laws are made for man. So there's a need for flexibility on both sides so that democracy wins at the end of the day. Okay. All right. Uh, there's also Quarry and Shamal operating illegally as the Minerals Commission has now uh, you know, reviewed. Because of time, I'll not really get into that story. Do you find that surprising? Um, this is a classic example of criminal negligence. Um, most often we um, cite instances of causing financial loss to the state. But this, in this instance, human lives yeah. have been lost. How do you account for that? And you cannot, you cannot put a price tag on human lives. Mm -hmm. Not at all. So um, a committee uh, will go into that, and we expect the committee to do what is expected of them, going to the bottom, unearthing all the causal factors of this expression and their lapses, the law should take its course. All right. Let's get into the papers. You have the Daily Guide, and um, let me see, Economy Times as uh, well, if you can just look at any stories from there that you'd like to get into. Um, cocoa price, cocoa price politics. 63.5 percent increment. Yes, uh, but some of the farmers yesterday we had a conversation. They are saying it's woefully inadequate if you take into account inflation and other matters, and they wanted something closer to the world price. But others also say that look, half a loaf is better than nothing, and it's some major improvement, not just in Ghana, in the West African subregion. But we have we are still our, our price is still below that of Cote d'Ivoire. And uh, this will also serve as an incentive for people to smuggle. Mm -hmm. So there's a need to um, adjust if, because um, we also understand the cocoa, Ghana cocoa body is in sort of crisis, financial crisis. And as Indeed, we've yes, heard stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so also we need to strike some balance between um, giving the farmers what is due them and, and at the same time also um, get some profit margin to uh, uh, be uh, uh, in operation. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe the, the Daily Guide newspaper? Daily Guide, uh, Eba's issue has come up again. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, that was uh, uh, one of Nana's jabs yesterday against mm -hmm. former president. Uh, I, I thought this matter had been cleared, though. So, you know, something that really, OSP, really surprises me OSP in this country. OSP handling this issue. We started with this issue before election 2020. Yeah. Before. Before. If there were anything, I ask. Why are we still getting into this matter without resolution, yet barbs, jabs being thrown? Do, do you get my point? To the point where, if I recall correctly, in the UK, their SFO, their serious fraud office, you know, went into this matter and also, you know, gave a verdict on it, throwing it out, basically. So why are we still here? And if any wrongs had been done, do you get it? If wrong has been done, deal with the person. And if no wrong has been done, why regurgitate what... Do you get what I mean? It's almost as though it were a circus. Both sides were playing games with us. The special prosecutor has indicated that it is only this issue. So there's a need for us to put more pressure on the special prosecutor to... SP from Amidu to Ajabing. We don't know where that... Uh, Maybe well. the, media, the, media, the, media, the media will exert more pressure on the special prosecutor to uh, bring a finality to this issue. And uh, because uh, it's, you know, get, if, if verdict is given at, you know, get to 2024, all kinds of minutes will be read into that. Hmm. So um, hmm. the process, of, if he's listening, his attitude should uh, fast track this issue. 
so that uh, uh, once, uh, once and for all we uh, put it to rest. Okay. Let me wrap with the final newspaper as we gear up to go. Uh, the, the major story there, I mean, we've done the stories on the NHIA uh, as well as the, I mean, the NLA collaborating with Ghana Post. There's also NHIA paid 244 thousand and seventy nine for Ghana CDs for two hundred and twenty six childhood cancer cases and um, that's 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 a good step this morning we put out a story about a lady I interviewed her once on prime morning and uh, she's she lost her child to cancer and She's, she's now at the forefront in Ghana at the Kulubu Teaching Hospital, among others. I think she has a center, also courtesy of Rebecca Ekufuado, the first lady, and they are working to help children. If you look at some of these children and things they come up with and the cost and sometimes cost. how, it's, it's just, it's inhibitive, you know, and children suffering like that with all those childhood cancers and all that we pray for them. But the final story, Agenda 111 to create over 20,000 direct jobs, another 25,000 jobs in the design and construction phase. I'm tired about promises and stuff like this. Agenda 111, we are in what, 2023. We have a year and how many months to go? Uh, and the promise, and the promise is that they'll be completed before the uh, Nardo's term. Is that practical? Is it feasible for you from where you sit? So and what this you underlines the need for the media in, in the name of comprehensive journalism. Mm. to look at where, look at the stages where these projects have reached, um, the stages of completion. And uh, because once we, we, we scrutinize, once we set our eyes, you know, mm. once, once, once the media, you know, mm. flag these issues, I believe it also serves as a pressure on officialdom to um, faster their completion. All so, right. Yeah, so the media should, should sharpen their focus on these projects with a view that they'll be completed within a specified time. I feel money. Thank you so much. But I can't let you go. I always do this to you. So pardon me for doing it to you again. What's the state of journalism in Ghana today? It keeps changing. How, how do you think the GJA is faring in some 20 seconds? Um, leadership styles uh, uh, vary. Some believe in uh, the Bastri type, Blastri type. Some believe in the seventh uh, 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 leadership style. And, and I, I believe in situation leadership. Uh, contextual variables should de determine what uh, any leader should do at any point in time. So the contextual, contextual variables in my time are different from what's for now. We are, um, in the days of uh, Cabra and Gifty, we're fighting um, uh, uh, dictatorship. We're fighting the, um, fighting the culture of silence. We're fighting against certain laws we shackled press freedom, like, like the Nisma Pan 19 law. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, President Kufo came and then repealed all of those. So, Criminal libel law. Yeah, so the climate change. So there's a, there was a need to also change the leadership side to suit um, um, uh, situation uh, variables at that time. We are in a different environment. Uh, uh, in certain instances, press freedom uh, is attacked. And uh, even though we have all the latitude on paper, to operate as journalists. But uh, as Pericles once said, once free is not forever free. Yeah. So there's a need for us, you know, to always be on board, you know, be on the highest alert okay. to fight encroachment of encroachment on our freedom. Do you feel there's any encroachment? Well, so many instances. So many instances. So many instances. Okay. And one one of one, one, one of the greatest dangers to press freedom is the ownership structure in the media. Political ownership, you mean? Political ownership. Mm. Political ownership. And more dangerous than what we experience on that military dictatorship. Because mm. owners dictate content. And this is very, very dangerous. Wow. Mm. Well, I feel money. Mm. Yeah, that's it. It's more Akwe. Yeah, I feel uh, yeah. <laughs> This segment was brought to you by Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. If you're a man, they're offering free prostate screening. If you're a woman, fertility screening, gratis, untiashe. Just head to any of their branches here in Accra at Spintex opposite the Shell signboard. Kumasi, Kronum Wabwehiam behind the Angel Educational Complex. The Stakradi Anaji State Tema Community 22. Techi Manhanswa and Siyama Nzama. If you'd like to call them, the numbers are 244 867 or 274 234 Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. 
the end to chronic disease. Bringing us to the end of the news review and the start of sports up next Tuesday.